The Northeast is strategically very important to India since it has large international borders which in the past were porous enough to allow insurgent groups to find safe havens in the neighborhood. Good relations with all neighbors, especially Bangladesh, are critical to the development of the Northeast because they would address issues like illegal immigration and the crucial issue of connectivity through road, rail and even sea links. It's not that the borders have been plugged. It's not that, uh, you know, population alleged illegal migrant populations have been identified and they have been sent back. Nothing of that sort has happened. And uh, there is not great deal of evidence that the entire population that Assam alleges is illegal migrant have actually come from Bangladesh. They could have been inside Assam. They could have been uh, a result of high birth rate that they also it could also be a result of the changing course of brahmaputra submerging the sandbanks which used to be occupied or which are generally inhabited by the bengali muslims uh, who ancestrally would have come from that uh, part but not to forget that assam and bangladesh are uh, was one is one landmass you see right. so there are areas in assam districts in assam which were part of what we call bangladesh so ancestrally also there would be a lot of people here but yes, it is a, it, there is a problem. I'm sure there has been a trickle of population, if not a, a deluge uh, coming in. Uh, our identification mechanism has not been uh, adequate um, and not even sincere. Bangladesh is a natural market as well as a source. I mean, if you looked at India's part, before India's partition, uh, not only Assam, but even smaller states like Manipur, Tripura, Meghalaya, uh, and even Nagaland, people used to move to then, you know, Bangladesh or then East Pakistan much more easily. And there is, I mean, I have recently interviewed some of the people there talking about their uh, attires and uh, what you call ornaments, uh, bits that they use. The Nagas have gone all the way even to Silet, I mean, Dhaka. And even they have gone to even Ahmedabad right. to get these bids. So there had been transaction, natural transaction, people had been moving. But with the partition and government, I mean, India being formed, you know, uh, the natural boundaries have somehow been sealed. So this opening up of these borders uh, with this transnational highway ASEAN is making bimstake, you have rightly said. JICA has already started funding mm -hmm. and there is connectivity network has to be expanded. So if that happens, I think there is possibility of rejuvenating uh, the region, but how far economically the region will progress is still a question uh, one needs to ask. Potential of border trade is huge, particularly between Bangladesh and India, Bangladesh, yeah, India and Myanmar, India and China. But, you know, having said the potential, the amount of items that are actually smuggled or are act actually go in and come, come in but through illegal means with state and non-state agencies involvement that actually deters the legal trade that should be going on. The biggest smuggling racket that continues between happens between India and Bangladesh is um, cattle because India uh, in most of the states you know um, you, you cannot kill cattle, scientific implement on scientific agriculture coming in, what had happened was that from say from North India, if we say where, where would all the cattle go? So you can't even kill them, you're not using them in the fields all the time, I mean you know so much because you're using tractors etc. So all that cattle violates six sections of the IPC, reaches Assam and uh, Bengal and are uh, you know uh, smuggled every day. And it happens with, uh, uh, with, with tacit involvement of forces from Indian side and from Bangladesh side. And, along, and this becomes Bangladesh's big export uh, you know, revenue because uh, through cattle, they uh, run the leather industry. Uh, they run the, um, the, your um, you know, cups and saucers are made, bone china. Okay and uh, uh, processed beef. So Bangladesh earns 
you know, X amount of revenue through illegal trade from India. So if India could legalize the trade and let's say, all right, we are going to you know, sell you the cattle and this is the price that you get, then, you know, people earn money. India earns revenue. Look, when you look at the vision of the world, and especially when you look at Asia, when you look at Asia, भारत के जो पूर्वोत्तर हैं वो बहुत ही अहम उसका एक अपना लोकेशन है जो जियो जो जियो पॉलिटिकल आप दृष्टि से देखेंगे उसमें भी पूर्वोत्तर बहुत ही अहम एक जगह पे बसता है पूर्व की ओर ईस्ट एशिया जो चाइना जापान कोरिया वगैरह बसता है और साउथ में साउथ ईस्ट एशिया उसके साथ सब भारत का जो जोड़ना है वो पूर्वोत्तर भारत से ही होता है लोग ये समझते हैं कि पूर्वोत्तर भारत जो है दिल्ली से बहुत दूर है और वहाँ तक पहुँचना वो मुश्किल है लेकिन आप दूसरे तरफ से देखें तो भारत का शुरुआत जो है वो पूर्वोत्तर भारत से होता है और हिंदुस्तान का जो फ्यूचर है वो अमेरिका और यूरोप के साथ नहीं है मैं तो ये बल दे करके बहुत सालों से मैं कहते आया हूँ भारत एक एशिया का देश है और भारत का भविष्य एशिया में ही है तो एशिया के जब आप बात करते हैं तो भारत का एशियन कॉन्टिनेंट में जो जोड़ है वो पूर्वोत्तर भारत से ही होता है यू आर कनेक्टिंग बैंकॉक टू न्यू दिल्ली पर सो आर यू गोइंग टू स्टॉप इन गौहाटी और इज इट गोइंग टू बी लाइक एज आई गिव द एनोलॉजी दैन वेन यू वॉन्ट टू मूव टू द्वारका फ्रॉम डेली There is a small villages in between, but you have built a very long and smooth uh, flyover. So, is that flyovers creates your connectivity, makes your connectivity easy, and also makes the villages invisible. Okay. So, is this reason going to be that invisible village? I'll say that government of India number A needs a policy to negotiate peace rather than just a peace. We need a counterinsurgency policy. In 60 years, we have not developed a counterinsurgency policy. We've only used force in a very ad hoc way, and that has become counterproductive. And if we continue using force uh, arbitrarily, then it's going to be even more counterproductive. You're only going to create more and more, uh, you know, pockets of resistance. And that's not so. It's, we are just going to go round and round the mulberry bush. So first, my priority would be uh, how to negotiate? We need a proper, coherent policy to do that. Number two, a counterinsurgency policy, which we still don't have. We have counterinsurgency operations. So CI ops is there, but you don't have a policy. And then, uh, parallel to this, because these two are important, because the entire area is, you know, uh, we have these pockets of resistance. And parallel to this is a road building. Just road building. When I say infrastructure, I'm not even getting into anything else. Just roads. Buniyadi jo suvidhaye hai, apko logon tak pani pochana, sadak pochana, bijli pochana, wo to prathamikta rahe gaye. Lekin usko bal dene ke liye purvottar mein jo infrastructure jo dhancha hai, wo bilkul nahi hai. Achhe sadke nahi hai, wahan pe achha vikas ka koi symbol nahi hai. हम लोगों ने ये सोचा है कि सबसे पहले पूर्वोत्तर के अंदर पूर्वोत्तर के ही लोगों के बीच में वर्ल्ड क्लास सड़कें होना चाहिए रेलवे ट्रैक होना चाहिए और वहाँ पे एविएशन सेक्टर में एरोप्लेन्स जो छोटे होते हैं एयरक्राफ्ट बड़े होते हैं उसको उतारने के लिए अलग अलग जगह हम लोग तय किया जाए तो एयरपोर्ट्स सब जगह बने पैसेंजर्स और उसको लोगों का सुविधाएं के लिए जो बेसिक जो रिक्वायरमेंट है वो हम लोग देना चाहिए साथ साथ हम लोग ने ये सोचा कि जो एजुकेशन है और हेल्थ इसको ट्रस्ट दिया जाना चाहिए भारत सरकार ने घोषणा किया है कि एम्स जैसे जो ऑल इंडिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंस सब तो दिल्ली नहीं आ सकते हैं तो एम्स के स्तर पर वहाँ पर मेडिकल कॉलेज खोलेंगे और IIT जो है हिंदुस्तान के सबसे बड़ा जो टेक्नोलॉजिकल इंस्टीट्यूट है IIT जो है वो हर राज्य में होना चाहिए तो हमारे आठ राज्य हैं पूर्वोत्तर में आठ राज्यों में आठ एम्स के स्तर का और IIT के स्तर का वहाँ हम लोग इंस्टीट्यूट खोलने के लिए यहाँ से घोषणा हुआ है 
it just being a natural paradise. And the rest of the country needs to look at the Northeast as it really is. Yes, there are issues and problems, but the way forward is to address them. The blind eye of social ignorance does not favor anyone. Painting this rich, diverse region by a broad brush, the Northeast, doesn't do justice to the variety of culture, people and beliefs that are present there. After decades of low-intensity conflict and sub-nationalism, in which people of the region felt alienated from the rest of India, they are now identifying themselves with Indian nationalism. What needs to be done is for the rest of India to understand and accept them as their own.